Right lads, welcome to Gotland, uh, one of the new nations in the 1.34 uh, update and also the Lions of the North DLC. Today we are going to be doing a pirate Gotland. So there's two ways that you can do Gotland uh, and it all starts with this decision. So down here uh, we have Gotland emissions which are basic and they'll change in a second. First, we can either stand behind Eric who used to be the King of Denmark and try and restore um, the Kalmar Union which basically if you occupy Jarland for five years, I think it is, or four years, or maybe three, then you automatically, basically you just become Denmark and you take Norway Sweden, which is great. It's a really, really interesting tree. Um, but for me, I love a good pirate uh, republic. So Eric is nobody's king, at best he is the mayor of Gotland. So after that, we get the fate of the republic and we either become a plutocracy, so a trade-based nation, or we become a pirate republic. One of my favorite government types of the game. As you can see here, we get a mission tree of our own. So here, Terror of the Baltic, so basically raid everyone, which gives us uh, lots of claims. And then after that, it's about taking the different free ports and getting a Pirate Haven, which is going to give us uh, a different bonus, depending on who's in power for the rest of the game. We have Pirate Federations, um, which I'm going to try and do by releasing Rugen, which we can do here. If we take Rugen, then they become a Pirate Republic and they become a vassal, which is pretty cool. I'd like it if um, a vassal Pirate Republic gave you the, the you know, 75% of the stuff that they raid, for example. Um, I think that'd be a really interesting mechanic because right now having them as a vassal doesn't actually make any sense because they'd be competing with me for raiding the Baltic. Um, we have other stuff like sinking the Danes um, and beyond that and going to uh, the Caribbean. And here we're going to be raiding the North Sea. So basically today what I want to be focusing on is raiding as much as possible, building up Gotland and basically creating a pirate haven. We start with Visby City at uh, rank 1, which gives us pirate efficiency uh, plus 20% or privateer efficiency. And obviously we're going to be taking that and immediately privateering. We're going to privateer in Gotland first. I'm sorry, in Novgorod first. Oh god. We're going to privateer ourselves. Make everyone like us is why the fact that we're pirates. I'm going to remove our castle here um, for the simple fact that if our navy should fall, then we are surely lost. Otherwise, let's go ahead and raid everyone. If you've never played E4 um, and you've never played a pirate republic, then you have to do this because it is easily the most satisfying thing you can ever do. I'm actually really pleased they uh, added this into the game because if some of you might recall, I did actually make a Gotland uh, playthrough where I became a Pirate Republic because you can do that. You can hoist the black flag. And we suddenly have 416 ducats. I'm not going to go and spam out box. So Gotland ideas or goodness ideas, I should say. Um, core creation cost minus 15% and privateer efficiency plus 15%. Both decent for what they are. Uh, development cost is always a solid one. Uh, mercenary maintenance, okay. Ship cost, not great. Trade power, okay. Merchant, very, very good indeed. Force limit modifier plus 33%, pretty good. And interest per annum, that's, it is what it is. And then trade efficiency plus 10%. So kind of weak ideas, to be honest. But you wouldn't expect them to have, like, godlike ideas. Also, I'm pretty sure you can duplicate your ruler as a general as well as an admiral if you do it before the month tick. Because the game hasn't registered uh, what you are yet. Enable naval force of at least 20. And that's how you get a naval force of at least 20. So that gives us uh, public claims on Denmark, Scaneland, and North Jutland, as well as Sea Dogs. So maintenance modified privateer efficiency percent So sink the Danes. So... We have to have a... Let's have a look. All the following must be true. We're a larger fleet than Denmark, and we have to kill 20 Danish ships, and they have to have a fleet smaller than five. I like how more complex the missions have gone. It's a lot more fun. Uh, I'm going to start with these lot then, and I'll go purely for the galley spam. Obviously, in here, galley combat ability plus 15% is going to be incredibly useful. Uh, why was bankruptcy suddenly looming? What did it think I was doing? So Denmark has 12 galleys, and you've got to remember that Norway also has three heavies. So we're probably going to need about 20 galleys. Ah, the Teutons are allied to them, and the Teutons actually have a decent fleet if I recall. I will say this, I enjoy playing as uh, a power republic, which is why I've chosen them. Uh, I will say that if you want a more overpowered game, then the then the monarchy version of Gotland is probably better. And I'll probably be doing that at some point. Privateer's way. Morale of navy is plus 20%. So you can't, there is no lawful uh, place amongst us for, from lawful state. Morale of army is plus 20% as well, my god. Basically, you can only ally pirate republic or the other ones. Uh, that's okay, republican tradition, pretty good. But I mean, my god, morale of navy is a morale of armies plus 20% each. That makes got Gutnish soldiers the best in the world at this point in time. That's that's as good as Elan. That's insane. In my opinion, you always want the uh, the buccaneers in charge because they give you yearly republican tradition plus one, and so you can keep people re-elected because that privateers way thing. So I like it. It, it. it sort of forces you to 
keep isolated. It makes sense. Like, we wait another three years, get our naval force map, and then we'll go after Bornholm. Marines would be super useful here, but like, I don't know. I'm gonna get them. So, what do Marines do for those of you who don't know? They have uh, basically the ability to go on and off ships really, really quickly, which means you can land and leave faster than the enemy can arrive. I did a joke playthrough where I played Marines only and discovered they were actually really good and I very much enjoyed them. But let's grab some Marines. Uh, one, two, three. We'll get three. We can afford it. I'm enjoying how aggressive Denmark is at the start of the game. Every game I've played so far, they've always gone after Danish Russia. And I think it's nice because it counterbalances Muscovy, who usually aren't challenged. Oh, okay, you were fighting Aragon, Navarra, and Naples. And you're just getting your ass kicked by uh, Morocco, Tunis, and, uh, <laughs> and the North Africans. Okay, well, that's fun. Tunis is up here sieging. Nice. <laughs> Oh, it's been so long since we had a Granada win. Oh, let's go with this privateer efficiency. They are, they, yep, there it is. There, oh, 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 took the gold mine. That is a, that is an insane amount of land. And they released Vizcaya. Oh, Astaria, sorry. There's no way you're okay with that. That, okay, yep. <laughs> That's a thing. Grab these guys a general, just so are a little bit quicker. Because technically, I should be able to fight the Holy Roman Emperor as well. Take Rugen. That's future plan. Get ready to raid, boys. Got the Von Habsburg Prince. Yep, oh, okay. Jesus. Castile's basically dead. So there's an election every five years, right? Uh, and by that point, provided we haven't had any events, we can get our Republic tradition back up to 100. So there is literally zero detriment to re-electing the same ruler, uh, which means pretty soon we'll have a 666. And every time, I just boost this up a little bit, and we go back to getting our full amount of three per year. Yeah, so we should... We absolutely there is no detriment because of that they, they'll probably nerf that the privateers way because the pirate republic detracts it by one which balance out with the base value of, of one but then you can get plus one from buccaneers and plus two from the privateers way so there is you'll always have that yeah okay you fighting swedish war for independence I'll, I'll raid and then i'll go to war this is the big one oh, 115 lovely all right leave behind our cogs i'm gonna get involved in that naval battle i think and we are going to declare war for bornholm get it going they're apparently fighting them ourselves Oh my god. Are we close to losing any of these ships? Because we are tearing through his. I think this might be a good exchange. G Jesus. Okay, we lost. We actually gained galleys. We killed 15 galleys. Alright, let's hide a little bit. Recuperate our strength. Alright, what's this? Sink the Danes. They have to have a fleet smaller than five. Alright, and now you see the value of Marines. Check this out. So, that's where the fleet is, right? Now, ordinarily, this is a terrible, terrible idea. And it remains such. Okay, I didn't expect there to be an army marching in at that moment. Don't want to lose any of these galleys, because that's sort of our thing. I also really want to fight the Danish fleet. Right, let's try this again. Alright, come on, Marines. Got a Holstein, trying to pick off the navy. I can see him coming. We're going out of there. <laughs> but that's sort of the beauty of it. We can nip in, see what we can get, and then nip out again. Whereas normal troops, that takes so long. Okay, he's over there now. I'm going to drop onto Lolland, which is now ours. They can't get there. I'm going to use this, like, slightly weaker fleet to just hold this area. Can't wait for everyone to leave first. Go, Marines. I just want to fulfill this mission. Just realize Finn's open. We'll take that. All right, now I'm going to bring the rest of the guys. <laughs> Okay, I actually want the length of election time to go down because then I can re-elect them faster. Sounds like, like kind of odd, I understand, but that's how we want it. Have I really not killed enough ships? A disease outbreak kills us here. Come on, 49%. We've taken Charlotte. Also, I'm pretty sure... I don't know if Sweden's winning this war. <laughs> I can't tell. It looks like they're losing. I'll go land on Mecklenburg and see if I can get them to surrender. The goodness Marines, boys. Yeah, that'll do it. He's out. There are no troops this side. I'm pretty sure I could just take this as well. Yeah, blow that one up as well. Right, what's our naval force limit? <laughs> we have doubled it. Okay, probably get rid of some of these ships. Um, realistically, we don't need this many cogs. We have nine there. We don't need this many. Um, eight light ships, ten. We could probably get rid of six galleys here. Nothing's around that can really threaten us. We are paying over our uh, limit as well uh, in terms of our army. But again, that should be fine. 92. But again, <laughs> they need to, they probably do need to buff that. They probably do need to nerf that. That's a, it's a bit broken. Surely. He's got seven. How many, you, you, how have you not lost? that many ships. They've lost 14 ships. They've got seven ships. Where? Where are these seven ships? So what we do is we let them on and then we kill them. Now, I really want to complete this mission. Uh, are you in this war? Nah, you're independent. I really want to complete this mission here because it's going to give us uh, aggressive expansion and separatism. Minus 10. And this guy's already got minus 5. So we'll have minus 15 years of separatism. So in order to do that, I'm going to let them onto Jarland and bet that I can take, that my Marines can take Harland faster than he can take Jarland. Oh, hang on. How many losses is that now? He's lost 20. He's lost 50. He's lost 15. That's not enough. Um, Yeah, all right. Let them through and lock them in. Now we need to hope that we kill all these ships. We did. Hey, there we go. Sink the Danes. And if we own this province, we get base tax and we change a little of the whatever that is. I really want to get this. Renowned Pirate King. Winning wars against countries with more development than God now has a 5% chance to grant our captain the stats of Legendary Pirate. They cost no Republican tradition to be re-elected. This is so broken. This is so broken! So to do that, all I need to do is have an Admiral with 12 pips and Naval tradition of at least 50. Alright, I want to take the islands here. I don't really want to take the other stuff. I like just island hopping. I'll take this island just because it gives us uh, range. So how raiding works is you can take three sea tiles away. So this will give us access to one, two, three. One, two, three. 
One, two, three, one, two. <laughs> We're gonna raid everything. Uh, that's why we do it at the end of the day. Uh, yeah, all these islands so we can't be taken out in future. Even if there's a coalition, it doesn't matter. Take all of their money because we are pirates. All right, sink the Danes. And the Danes themselves don't even get a uh, coalition against us. We could probably be taken, like, and stick to the roleplay. Goodish. We're gonna embrace Renaissance. I should call these provinces. Dude, Levani, I do not think you want to do this, man. Look at that unrest. Oh my god, that's incredible. All right, we're gonna rival Lubet and we're gonna rival Wolgast. Guess where we're going next? I thought I said Scotland for a second. I was very confused as to why we'd given that over. It's got them. Jesus. Our pirates immediately have 21%. There's only 12 of them going. And that gives us Terror of the Baltics, which gives us permanent claims on every province with a central trade on every province modifier, which is in these regions. So now obviously it becomes a little bit trickier when you're attacking into the Empire. Lubeck and such. Oh, Riga would come in. That's actually ideal. I don't think you can come anymore. All right, now we've got that as a forward operating base. We can send our boys over here. We've already caught it. Damn. Gromborg, the pirate castle. Excellent. So gain two base manpower. We've got Entropot and also. Kronborg, because naval tradition one protecting trade plus 50%. We don't really do that. We do get naval tradition for blockading, though. But, like, if you... Okay, it does. Nice. It counts. <laughs> I wasn't blockading here. And so they've just sent troops around. Send three galleys to pin them there. So what do we get when we take this? Center trade increased by one. And it's free port until the end of the game, which gives us unrest. And also plus 100% in manpower, sailors, and ship repair. Awesome. Was low on sailors, but fortunately we can go and raid Britain. Oh my god. Now I should be able to raid here. I should be able to raid the coast of Holland. Nice. And also over here. And around the back here. <laughs> And one, two, yeah, we should be able to raid the Irish Sea as well. Nice. Thousand days it took us on the Siege of Riga. Oh, that's amazing. These boys went on a massive adventure. And we have 10,000 sailors and our cap is 2,000. Let's go at Conquest of Ladiga. Good luck. You know what's really fun? When you get uh, two allies to fight and then you just walk in and kill the victor. All right. I think it's time we stopped hiding in the shadows. Actually, no, we need... Hmm, I probably should have taken Rugen before anything else. Now that I think about it. Free the Port of Riga, which has no unrest. First idea group. Gotta go exploration. As much as I'd love to do the uh, full naval, uh, I really want to get to the new world. Because if we get to the new world and we discover Bermuda, we get basically a colony of permanent claims. You know what? I'm not too fond of this Rugen thing. Because again, it, they are our competition. It doesn't really make sense. So I think I am going to go for the Teutons and everything else and start building the Baltic Empire, which means we can't fight the empire just yet obviously uh fighting the empire would be very tricky uh if we have any sort of uh, holdings that aren't island and we've sort of done that with riga hungary burgundy and lancia and aragon has really gone after castile castile's dead like they're they're, they're done it does enable the clergy state which would be pretty cool but mm, i like respect for the sea keep that naval tradition high you know what i don't think we're gonna get it between five and twelve pit i really want to waste it though with the rugen thing we get a an admiral with uh 75 probably have 12 pips and we've taken parts of the baltic by parts i mean most and all this land i mean we can trade company roll the teutons roll the scots i think we're gonna go in against you okay we lost the naval battle Let's uh, see what happens next, shall we? And our boy's dead. The guy's got 12 pips. So if we just keep bumping him up, we can do the whole legendary Pirate King thing. And he's strict. This is the story of a man named Lath. Lath was an interesting individual. So interesting, in fact, that he turned off his Camry in a move of complete and utter brilliance. However, he would turn it back on in short order. See your Koenigsberg? Let's just head in here. And our general died. I gotta take better care of my, uh, my guys over there. All these areas are covered by forts, which should be fine. And there goes those troops. All right, Stettin. Technically, I have a claim on you. I'd rather not incur the wrath of, well, Europe. Not just yet. Teutons, however, I will take. Free port Danzig. Cheers, Muscovy. <laughs> Guaranteeing a guy who just keeps on raiding you, huh? Bold. Progressive, I'll tell you that much. Danish separatists. All right, rivals wise. Rival the Danes and we'll rival the Swedes. We've allied the English. Finally, a test for our navy. Ah, it's been a while since we were able to raid Denmark. It's, it's a nice little pastime. Now let's go raid the English. Hey, don't get upset. You're used to this. Must we just revoke their guarantee? Okay. Don't mind me, just gonna raid England. Is it not better to privateer Lubeck? No? You're just, you're telling me that Novgorod's the only one. Let's be a ducky a month, I suppose, so I can't really complain. Ah, the next reform. We desperately need uh, governing capacity. Like we were. Over. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cheers for leaving the military coalition. Appreciate it, mate. Who's in it now? Just Poland. <laughs> or rival Muscovy. You might think that Poland has a coastline, but no. <laughs> we are the coastline. It looked like they were planning on attacking there, but left the coalition instead. <laughs> might have gotten quite lucky there. Right, in a year's time, we have another election. which should bump our guy up to fourth. Or now, we have an election. Now we just need better Republican tradition. Okay. Right, we need to try and find Bermuda. In finding Bermuda, we get... And the Caribbean, we get 400 people join a frontier. So we actually need a colonist. All right. 
He's discovering, and we're at war. Take Danzig, which is not really protected by a fort. All right, well, let's uh, let's prep for this. We've got a thousand ducats, not that much manpower, but we don't really need manpower. We're going to murder the Swedes. Now, we do need to leave behind a token force here. Uh, let's like, set, leave half our galleys behind. I'm the same tech as them. Go ahead and see how our stats line up. We have better everything. I'll take it. Oh, bloody hell. They're just going to go around, aren't they? All right, line up and win, and boys, and look lively. Okay, Austrian inherited Burgundy, but Burgundy got split up. All right, we're going to start a Golden Era here. We we're also going to get war taxes because we desperately need them. Seeing as the Swedes are here, I'm, I've sent some Marines to go and take Stockholm. One siege of Stockholm. Spread out, boys. Get as much war score as possible. Basically, just a siege race now. We are hemorrhaging money, but we do get beyond the sound tool. So we get 400 colonists to join a thing in Bermuda. So we have, we have control of Bermuda. Which is nice. Now, we want to get Pirates of the Caribbean. So, Bermuda will be a city. That'll happen soon. And five provinces owned by you or your non-tributary subjects in the Colonial Caribbean. And then we get a place in the sun. So, basically, just colonize the Caribbean. God, okay. We've got 50%. Like, it's not realistically getting better. That's not a good offer. It's understandable. Most of our army is sort of mercenary based. Mm, we're a bit too close here. I don't really feel like I can push anymore. They're on low. We can take what we want. Yeah, take the two provinces, war operations, money. Okay, the Lithuanians are so much nicer to fight, man. Getting whiplash from the amount of different factions that are taking over. We're taking out loans every couple of days now. Every couple of ticks. All right, and there we go. Take 800 ducats. I need to delete all of these mercenaries, they annul their treaties with Sweden. Oh god, that was horrible. All right, I sent some boys to the Caribbean for the second time because they may or may not have been murdered. All right, use these marines to murder the natives and prepare to defend against the English. <sighs> All right, I'm actually going to need this fleet back. All right, so this is the conquest of the Shetland. Leave behind the cogs because they're useless in combat. Oh no, oh no, it's 16 cogs on their own. Oh, I've been caught by the heavies. The heavies are dead. So are the cogs. We caught, we, we captured a heavy. We also captured, oh my, that's, okay. Well, now this is where the Marines are really going to come in handy. Drop off the boys in Ulster. We're Season Island today, boys. This may have been a financial decision from the uh, English here. You called in the Danes. All right, we took out one of the heavies. You guys got to remember who's master of the waves here. It ain't the, it ain't the English. We'll lose three cogs. That's fine. They were captured anyway. Three heavies. All right, new idea group. Uh, we are going to go naval ideas. Why not? Oh, I see some Norwegian ships. There were some Norwegian ships, at least. Ah, the death of our captain. It's fine. We've got another one. <laughs> I don't appreciate you raiding me, man. Or blockading me, sorry. Really don't have to do a Teutonic Separatist right now. We're about to do something magical. You've never seen this before in EU4. Coordinated landings. Apparently because it doesn't work. All right, nice. Bermuda is self-sustaining. <laughs> no, 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 no. You wanted to stay, so stay. Why not? Enjoy yourself. Ship durability. Oh, that's good stuff. And whilst we're here, we can also raid. <laughs> can murder the Danes. And whilst we're at war with the English, go raid them. All right, we can't beat 40,000 Englishmen without going into hideous debt. And I don't really want to do that. And there's a place I'm not blockading. Silly me. Burn England. <laughs> I get really vengeful when AI declares war on me, man. I, I don't like it. Look, I know this war looked good on paper. Uh, oh, I see. The Ottomans have come to play. But they're a tributary state, the Ottomans. Okay, and now the Teutons are alive. Well, oh, advisor cost, yeah, absolutely. One of the best uh, things in the game. Uh, label, we got naval leader shock and also mercenary maintenance. Yeah, we already have ridiculously good navies. I, I don't think that naval ideas was necessary, but it's funny. So I'm gonna do it. Go murder them and our troops are still incredible because of that 20% privateer's way. Yeah, I would not have survived that Polish war if it wasn't for the Golden Era. That'd have been me, that'd have been me done. Who's more to blockade, man? We don't even get naval attrition up here. We go raid Iceland. And only at the cost of 14,000 troops, we get ourselves a new island. <laughs> well, literally. Pirate Confederacy, boys. Oh, man. It's just it's just so much fun. I'm gonna have to actually kill these English uh, particularists, unfortunately. The only person who can realistically kill us is uh, Muscovy. And they probably should. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I open my mouth? Why do I use words, man? Oh my god. Why? Why do I speak? Oh my god. Why do I... Oh, I do this to myself. I say stupid things and I forget the game can hear me. We've got a thousand ducats to play with. Like, we should be okay, realistically. The AI just keeps on declaring war because they think that they can take me. He's on Miltech 6, for God's sake. <laughs> God, he's just melting. Got full morale. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Mate, you're an inconvenience. That's what you are. Yeah, this counts as a holy war, right? For context, we have more morale than the Ottomans, who are currently in a golden era. Pretty sure those troops are trapped there now. They're not moving. Oh, no, they, they are moving. Right, I am losing 23 ducats a month. I think it's worth staying in this war. He'll give us never. And he'll give us this stuff. I don't, yeah, I don't think that we want to be in this war. Especially when Poland might bring us. All right. 
What have we got here? Separation of power. Black market consortium. Enables merch republic mechanic. Vassals transfer trade power to you. Higher state governing costs. Cheaper trade companies. And smugglers influence. And we could also place trade posts, which kind of sounds cool. Pirate king. Harsh room cost minus 20%. And land naval leader fire. I like that. War against the world doctrine. Obviously, we have to do that. Enables world get well. Enables war against the world. Casas Belli, which is amazing. Shipbuilding time. Years of separatism. In case you're wondering what that is, let's say I was going to declare war, war against the world, it's 75% for all provinces. So it's basically imperialism, but like really early. I want to know how much, how we've gotten this much war score. Pskov and Novgorod were 20% each battles that, yeah, and then war god, that makes sense. Jesus. Did not know Pskov was that valuable. No, the natives! You bastard. All right, he's on low. Uh, I can't think of anything else I want to do to him. Maybe that. Take Novgorod, secure our trade a little bit. Yeah, he'll do it. Sweet. Works for me. I'll pay off our loans. Get rid of this mercenary company. I have to apologize. There's something I've not been doing. Uh, firstly, obviously, we need to be raiding the day, the uh, the Swedes. But let's uh, let's go do that first. The last three wars I've been in have all been defensive. So this is what we can do. Raid the French. I'm actually be able to raid the Galicians as well. One, two, th yeah, three. It's been raided recently. All right, the Moroccans. Fellow raiders, it seems. Oh, I didn't take war operations. It's kind of dumb of me. Where does Portugal hold provinces we have claims on? Why do they have claims on Portugal? Zui. Is this Zui? Where's Zui? How can I declare war on something I, for something I don't know? The cry bus is a thing. God damn. It. All right, so Portugal's gotten the uh, colonialism institution, and it's taking me so long to colonize uh, around here because of the Treaty of Tordesillas, right? So I was thinking, I'm a pirate. Why am I not acting like a pirate? I should just attack you, which brings in England and Castile, but I have a navy. So we're going to war against the world, bring those guys in. This lot can hold this straight, and these guys can murder the navy. Now we've just got to make sure we win over here, and we should be good to go. Did you just delete his troops? All right, I've scorched the earth here, just so I can nip out. Okay, that's a lot That's a lot of heavies. All right, we're going to have to fight this one. Uh, we need to bring over our navy. This guy's job here is done, pretty much. But we need him to come back and help fight, because we're fighting the three largest naval powers right now. Okay, where are you landing? Desmond. All right, leave the cogs behind. It's going against the English. He might have six carracks, but that doesn't matter to me. All right, I'm using the 17 cogs to bait out the English fleet because they still have six carracks. There he is. They're actually holding him. They're actually winning. I want to point out that 17 cogs are holding off three callies or three carracks, sorry. They're actually, they actually sunk something. I and mean, I'm happy just to take all this stuff, really. I don't really want anything else. I mean, he'll give it to me. I'll take it. Gotland of Caribbean. And with that, we can take a place in the sun. Gotland is the island of origins. A port many of us named their trusted home, but we before we pretended that it has a better climate than the tropical cli islands of the Caribbean. Many of our men yearn for relocating to the main port of these islands for several reasons. So Bermuda becomes the new capital. And until the end of the game, we get another 10% in each. And Tortuga is a level two center of trade. Meaning that all this land, boys, is now directly coreable. We do not create a colonial nation. We just get it directly. And all the stuff over here can become part of a trade company should we uh, show so choose. But, you know, we, we don't. <laughs> I'm enjoying this. Right, lads, I think that's what we'll leave for today. So that is the incredibly overpowered Pirate Republic of Gotland. You saw me defend against Poland, Lithuania, against Muscovy, against England, and also Portugal and England in turn. Um, our force limit modifier doesn't really matter because we make a ton of money off of trade and then we just raid whatever we need. Uh, and that was me not really being on it with the raiding. Uh, people underestimate Pirate Republics. I think that there is sort of like, when you're fighting wars in E4, there's a limit to how much your nation can pull, right? And that's dependent on ducats. Manpower obviously is incredibly important, but when you're talking about mercenaries, it depends on uh, the amount of... Uh, money have how big your ducat pool is so if you can raid and maximize that nations like tunis and morocco and stuff oh no granada why uh can actually take on much much larger enemies for about two years they can blitz them barrage it take a bunch of key forts and then get rid of the mercenaries and i think that's it's an incredibly high stakes way to play and a lot of fun so if you did enjoy, please do let me know uh, in the comments down below. If you want me to play Gotland, but the monarchy version, I can show you how that tree works. I'd be happy to. Again, please leave that in the comments down below. Otherwise, boys, I do hope you enjoyed. Please do make sure to like and subscribe because it really does help me out. And I will see you all next time. Goodbye. Huge shout out to our patrons, most notably, Charlie Demorel, Krilly, Flyerton, JDow52, Cargon, Xiaomi, Lewis Wright, Nicole's Christ, QA Shard, Redguard, and Shadowsinger. Your support means a lot, guys. Whilst you're here, you might as well click on another video. I mean, it's, it's literally right there.